Water covers about 70% of the Earth's surface. Every human and creature alike depends on it for their very existence. It's also important for the prosperity of communities, communities like Elkin, North Carolina. The land was fertile, the water clean. Archaeologists confirm that natives of this country first hunted and fished the area 10,000 years ago. European settlers came in the mid-18th century, not so much for food as to harness the power of the water. You know, the town of Elkin itself was named after the Elkin River, which uh, we now call the Big Elkin Creek, but at one time on a, a map from the 1770s was, was defined as the Elkin River. One of the first recorded residents in this area was a man named David Allen, who lived here around 1776. There's multiple notations of folks from Salem coming here to buy lumber from a, a lumber mill he had and also to buy iron from his iron furnace. In 1840, Richard Gwynn was the postmaster of Jonesville, North Carolina, located on the south side of the Yakin River. But he decided to purchase 6,000 unspoiled acres on the north side. It eventually became the land that Elkin was established on, and the Elkin Land Company would sell that land to people who wanted to purchase it. Gwynn built a home there overlooking the Yadkin River called Cedar Point on what is now West Main Street. He also built the first school and church nearby in 1850. Which still stands today and it's located up on Church Street as the Richard Gwynn Museum. And it is the oldest church and school in Surrey County. But it was Gwynn's next endeavor that would establish a foothold on the future of Elkin, its entrance into the textile industry. The grist mill that Richard Gwynn built on the east side of the Big Elkin Creek was the first known industry built in what we would call Elkin today. And he later expanded that into a cotton mill and then it was named the Elkin Manufacturing Company. And it was in business on up through the 1890s. I believe they were making uniforms during the Civil War for the Confederacy. There's an interesting story with General George Stoneman and the Stoneman Raiders coming through as he zigzagged all over northwestern North Carolina in, in the spring of 1865. It was April to be exact, and he brought 2,000 cavalrymen with him. It's quite the sight, I'm sure, for the little town. But anyway, the cotton mill was spared, and he continued on his way. But that was the only little brush that we had here with the Civil War in Elkin. In 1866, Richard's son, Richard Ransom Gwynn, built another grist mill and store about a mile north of Big Elkin Creek in the community of Elkin Valley. Instead of payment in money, he bartered for wool. Eleven years later, his brother, Thomas Lenore Gwynn, and brother-in-law, Alexander Chatham, bought the woolen business and started the Elkin Valley Woolen Mill. Thomas Gwynn sold his interest in the mill to Chatham in 1890, and it was reorganized as the Chatham Manufacturing Company. It was a boom time for Elkin. The town was officially chartered in 1889 with a population of 288, and the Northwest North Carolina Railroad arrived in 1890. It would later become Southern Railway. Elkin, North Carolina was open for business. Chatham has now moved, built a new plant east of town down by the railroad tracks in 1893 to take advantage of the railroad. There was a veneer company. The Elkin Shoe Company was formed. It was just a growing time for the economy. By 1910, the population had exploded to 1,200 citizens. One year later, the Elkin Allegheny Railroad made its first trip north on July 4th. But what had brought people to this small town at the junction of two rivers was almost its demise as well. Water, and too much of it. In 1898, the first flood devastated the Chatham Manufacturing Plant. They rebuilt, but 18 years later, there was another flood. With more devastation, residents worried that Alexander Chatham's son, Hugh Gwynn Chatham, now at the helm of the company, would relocate to another town that was less flood prone. The decision that Mr. Hugh Chatham made at that time to keep Chatham Manufacturing in Elkin 
was so crucial to our history because he already had a plant in Winston-Salem. The finishing plant was down there. And he lived in Winston-Salem at the time and he could have just as easily said, we're through with this, we're gonna move all operations to Winston. But he said, no, we're gonna rebuild an elk and on higher ground, and that's where the basic mill is today. That decision spurred other economic growth. The rich fertile land was ideal for producing crops like tobacco. At one time, downtown Elkin had three tobacco warehouses. The Liberty, which still exists today, down on East Main Street, the Liberty was built in the 20s. Uh, it's the only one of the three that survive, so tobacco market time was huge. As businesses flourished, so did banking. The first was Elkin National Bank, established in 1901. And it was located on the northwest corner of Main and Bridge Street. Streets in the downtown were paved in the 1920s, and the first hospital was built above Turner Drug, later to become Royal Drugs at West Main and Church Street. Progress continued as U.S. Highway 21 came through in the late 1920s. It followed the same route as Bridge Street and was named the Lakes to Florida Highway as in Great Lakes to Florida. But all progress came to a screeching halt in 1933, thanks to the Great Depression. When Casualty was Elkin National Bank, it closed and never reopened. Literally, when people couldn't get into the bank, that was a tough situation. So what the Elkin Merchants Association did, they created some script that was backed by the Chatham payroll, and folks in town could take their checks to the stores downtown, get the goods they needed, and they would give them change back in script. And then once the banks reopened, they could cash that in and get their monies. Most importantly, Chatham made sure their employees kept their jobs. To make sure that children went to school and had shoes and ate and that sort of thing. There's never been anybody that loved their employees and, and looked after them uh, like Chatham did. Eventually, some of the banks reopened, like the Bank of Elkin. It moved into the former Elkin National Bank building in 1937. The hospital also moved from Main Street to Hawthorne Road and was renamed Hugh Chatham Memorial Hospital. Elkin had survived the Great Depression and was moving full steam ahead into the middle of the 20th century when floodwaters once again spilled out of the riverbanks in 1940. I can remember standing up here on Gwen Avenue and seeing all the water down there up almost up to the main street. Everybody survived and <laughs> we had a bridge that washed away, which I saw. For the third time, Elkin cleaned up and rebuilt. And when duty of another sort called during World War II, citizens of Elkin rose to the challenge. Not only did we have all these men going off to fight that were called to serve their country, but the people that stayed at home that were working at Chatham Manufacturing Company were making blankets for all branches of the armed services. They were making cloth for the uniforms. Chatham Manufacturing continued to demonstrate its loyalty to the citizens of Elkin by closing its finishing plant in Winston and moving operations to Elkin in 1940. And all these employees came from Winston-Salem to Elkin now. Of course, we had school teachers and merchants and everything, but there were 3,000 employees there. In the 1960s, the Elkin Public Library was built on the site of Richard Gwynn's grist mill, and Elkin Furniture became associated with Bombassett out of Galax, Virginia. A decade later, the hospital moved to Parkwood Drive, and Interstate 77 was well under construction, following a portion of U.S. Highway 21. Elkin was now more accessible than ever before, and more citizens meant a larger tax base and better services for the town. They built a new fire department, they built a new water treatment plant, they built an airport, they built the present bridge across the Yagan River at Bridge Street. This place was electric. On Saturday mornings, it was like the state fair. We had three movie theaters, three or four barber shops, three or four beauty parlors, four general merchandise stores four or five appliance and electronic stores, four or five jewelry stores. Everything that you can get around Elkin, 
was in downtown Elkin. The need for quality education was never more important. The first school was built in 1850, followed by a progression of new and better schools, which were part of the Surrey County system until 1947, when a bill was introduced to create Elkin City Schools. The school over there was great. We had some real good teachers. A lot of, of us went on to college. We had the highest educational level of most any small town in North Carolina. Since the 19th century, Elkin had been in a state of continued growth. But in the 1980s, that began to change. When the Chatham family sold the Chatham Manufacturing Company, it was, it was acquired by Northern Feather. That was the start of the slow downhill fall of the textile business in Elkin. The sale of Chatham and the fact that jobs across the country were going overseas greatly decreased the workforce in Elkin. And the area that had once been the heart and soul of town was in decline. Stores that were once fixtures on Main Street were either forced to close or moved to higher traffic areas along Bridge Street. Some towns would have dried up and blown away, but not Elkin. The same ingenuity and determination that had first built Elkin was discovered again in a new generation of entrepreneurs who were intent on keeping the town alive. In place of tobacco, the wine industry has popped up because people saw the similarity of the soil and the climate as being favorable to grapes that would grow in France. In 2003, the Yadkin Valley became a federally approved American viticultural area. Today, more than 40 wineries are within 40 minutes of Elkin, bringing jobs and the lure of delicious wines to tourists from around the world. <laughs> Hugh Chatham Memorial Hospital underwent major renovations to expand in 2010, including a $5 million patient tower. And portions of Elkin High School and Middle School were completely renovated and enlarged in 2012. Once again, industry is moving to Elkin. And tourism has grown to include our beautiful state park and a magnificent trail system. It's going to connect our community together in ways that it never has. I mean, think about going up here to Stone Mountain and being able to get on a trail and come all the way down to downtown Elkin. You know, I think it's, it's going to be a neat thing. Fortunately, a dam was constructed in Wilkesboro in 1962 to help keep the Yadkin River within its banks. But it's that river and Big Elkin Creek that first brought David Allen and Richard Gwynn here. Those rivers whose falls created the power to start a textile industry. And it remains those rivers that will continue to write the story of Elkin for centuries to come. <laughs>